True Lady writes, I have bunches of leftover letter stickers from different sets. Most are missing key letters, so it's hard to make full words from what is left. I've seen pages with mixed titles that look coordinated, but I haven't had much luck when I try it. Do you have any tips for making these mixed titles work? Glittergirl, can you help True Lady tackle tricky title typography? Of course I can. If your letter stickers are starting to make you want to name your next child XQZ, um, let's go ahead and look at a few ways that we can get lots more from your letter stickers by piecing together all those bits and pieces at the end of the sticker sheet. So um, I'm going to just make one layout with you today and then look um, carefully at a, both a title and a subtitle using a range of stickers. So I haven't um, pulled up the letter stickers yet. I'm going to show you everything else that I'm going to use today. The layout's going to be based on this um, paper from the Amy Tangerine sketchbook collection, which has hearts and a watercolor background on one side, but we're going to use this um, turquoise ledger paper. Then with that, oh, I'm just going to put that on a bit of gray cardstock, by the way. Um, and then with that, I want to add in some orange, which I'm picking up from here, but I'm also picking up from the photos. And I have one of those from the same collection. This is also the sketchbook collection. Um, that's an orange watercolor. The other side has a pink doodled flower. And then this lovely orange polka dot, which is the Bella Boulevard Sunshine and Happiness collection. And the other side is this um, rainbow of starbursts in all different colors. It's called Popsicle Kisses. So gonna, I may use a little bit of both sides, but definitely that orange. And then, oh, and there's one more Amy Tangerine piece here. I'm not sure if I'll use this one, but I pulled it out since it would match. And this is the blue grid on one side and uh, black and white print on the other. And that's called Gwyneth's Graph, like graph paper. Yeah. And then this uh, paper from Toy Box by Echo Park, which is one of their mini collections. It just has a few sheets. And, and it has this great primary color scheme. Now, this automatically looks like a very... Um, a toddler child themed paper and I'm not going to use it with that at all. I'm just going to cut different bits apart so that I can use the colors because there's actually quite a bit here that's um, multi-purpose. So you've got this lovely little triangle design. All these words could be separated and then not have to be so child themed altogether. You've got lovely ledger themed labels and a blue scallop print here and the pinwheels wouldn't necessarily have to be childhood. They could work for just various spring and summer things. And same thing with the airplane. So I think um, even though there's a lot here that's iconic childhood stuff, uh, I don't think it has to be for childhood pages. And I'm going to use most of it on different layouts and none of them will be um, little kid uh, pages. So I think either way you're fine. By the way, the other side is this red tone-on-tone um, -tone checkerboard. Okay, and, and then some embellishments trying to go with this um, orange and turquoise. I've pulled out um, this indie cheek from my mind's eye and I'm going to warn you up front, I think I'm only going to use one tiny little piece. <laughs> I want to use the rest on another layout, um, but I just liked this little piece with the orange box that said fun on the little pennant, so um, please don't hold it against me that I'm not going to use the rest all on the same page. I'll use it somewhere else. Um, and October Afternoon's 9 to 5 collection includes some orange and turquoise along with um, green and royal blue and red. And so from the flower sack I thought I might pull out some of the orange and turquoise elements. Some label stickers from uh, Miss Caroline because there was both orange and turquoise on that sheet. And the Amy Tangerine sticker book um, from Sketchbook. And then also this which is new to the two-piece store. This is Hello Forever which is a line by Marcy Penner. And it's all she has journaling boxes and then all sorts of different little badges. Um, so they come like this in a little envelope which you can use on a page if you really want to. And then the badges have all sorts of different things. And they come in all different themes, days of the week, months of the year, and then random little things like this. And, and the reason I pulled these out is because a lot of the designs are on graph paper. So that's going to match the supplies that I've already pulled out. And I'm not sure if they've, they've been selling out. So this particular design may not be available today, but there are all different sets. And if you do really like this set, which has click photos, snapshot, 
an ampersand, a smile, and a chevron. If you really like that set, then click that request and notify, and then you'll find out as soon as it's back in the shop. Okay, so that's the stuff I'm going to use minus the letter stickers. And I have these two 4x6 photos from Queen's Day in Amsterdam, which has an immense amount of orange. The entire town, well, the entire country just wears orange from head to toe. So that's why I wanted to have lots of orange in my layout. So I'm going to get the layout constructed first, and then we're going to talk all about letter stickers. And um, But if you want something that's a bit more graphic and orderly, you can stack up multiple mats like this and still keep them square even though that photo is not centered. So I can bring that over as far as I want and then I can start adding other elements and keep it all um, square. This isn't it here? There we go. So I could keep everything very straight and orderly like that and it's the same pieces that I would use even if I decided I want it to be a bit more haphazard and I put them on a slight angle so that it looks more like paper stacked up on the desk. So it's just a matter of which look you like best. Now there's one thing I wanted to do because I'm going to cover up part of this flower in order to have enough room on my page. Um, but I like this idea of the motif and I don't want it to look like that's kind of an accident that it's there. So I want to make something a bit more obvious of it. And that means I'm going to see how I could replicate this. Well, in the Amy Tangerine stamp set for this sketchbook collection. There's a stamp that's of a similar style to this drawing. So I'm going to stamp that on the blue grid paper. Now what I did was to stamp it in the middle so that I could just get an idea of what it looks like um, and that's going to be covered up. And then I'm going to go over to the edge. Now see how this pattern goes off the edge of the paper? That's what I want to replicate. So I'm going to take that layer on its own and move everything else aside. I've got my stamp on my block and I'm using black ink. And then I'm just going to come down to this corner and get those petals off the edge and stamp just okay. there. All the papers are in place now and um, I've added space for some journaling, space for the date and the subtitle down here. I've used um, some stars, some scallop circles, and just tried to repeat things in three different places. So um, the stars, the um, the orange stickers from that uh, Amy Tangerine sticker book, things like that. Um, and some of the elements are up on um, pop dots just to give a little bit of variety. These border strips have pop dots at the edges, but then just use normal adhesive underneath the photo, and then you can have a border that has some dimension without having to pop the whole photo up off the um, layout. So um, now I want to start looking at what to do with um, the lettering and the idea being that you've got a whole bunch of sets of sticker sheets that look a bit like this where you've got um, a, a lot of letters missing and um, whatever you have left won't necessarily spell something amazing. Now um, one of the easiest ways is to take all of those different fonts and put them together to make a mixed up title. But it's really um, easy to put them together and then not be happy with how they look. So a few tricks. One is to use something that's clear and plastic so that you can place all your letters there and then start moving them around the page. Um, to see if you like how they look on the layout. That's a lot um, more forgiving than starting and putting one sticker down onto the page and as you go you can't um, move them necessarily. So I just use um, the empty packet of stickers, so this is the outside of a pack of stickers, and put them on the edge. It does get a little bit fiddly where they want to fall off and things like that, um, but it's a good compromise because then you'll be able to move things around and see how it works. Now I'm going to go with this just about here. What I'm looking for is that I want my stickers to touch another element of the page. If I take this title and I put it up here, it doesn't work. The reason is because there's all this trapped space in the middle. Where I've added all these elements close to the photo and everything is is touching. I need to keep that consistent with the title. So, unstick that. If I take this title from up here, even down to here would be better, but I still have trap space underneath. So unless I was going to write on that grid paper there in the middle, this still isn't the best. If I bring it right down so that the letters are just touching, 
that top of the photo, that's the best composition to match all the embellishment I've done. Now if you don't like for anything to touch your pictures, then your embellishment would already be perhaps here. And using photo mats is a real um, a saver then because you can have things touch the edge of the photo mat and not touch the photo. Um, I totally understand if you don't um, you don't want things over the top of your photo and especially if you're dealing with with original prints and, and one-of-a-kind type pictures there's a lot of reason to not have things over the photo. Um, but if they're easily reproduced um, my design preference is to have them touch. Now um, with this I can line all the letters up so that I see where the edges are and then I can press down the top of each letter and then I can go back and pull the plastic out from each one. Now a few other things in how I chose these letters. When you're dealing with mixed up letters at the ends of sheets you're going to be limited to what you can pick um, but the idea is to work with the colors that are already there. So I'm taking colors that are already represented somewhere in the design. So there's obviously a lot of turquoise and orange and I've purposely started and, um, and then mirrored that. So start and end with the turquoise and then there's an orange letter not far off from each of those. So that, and there's also a turquoise in the middle to anchor it. So it's obvious that the main colors in my title are the same as the main colors on my page, the turquoise and the orange. But then there's a little bit more because um, just doing the title in two colors can be a bit um, too saccharine, I think. And um, you need to throw a little bit more in it to make the multicolor mixed up fact work. So um, I've added then, I looked at this multicolored strip here and found some blue, so I added in a two, um, two different letters that are blue. Um, I was really f struggling to find an S on any of these sheets, but there's a tiny little bit of green down here in the design, so I picked that up to use um, for this S. And then there's gray in the background paper, so this um, gray letter here brings that in together. So everything that's in this title comes from something that's already in the design, and that's why it was important to me to have everything else done first and then go to the letter stickers. Here's my finished page uh, with a subtitle made from the same technique but with smaller letter stickers. So I've mixed both the kind of letter stickers that come on tiles, like the mini market letters by October Afternoon and then the tiny type letters from um, my little shoe box. And then I've mixed that with a letter that's not a tile, with a couple letters that are from a normal um, cutout sticker sheet. Um, but what I wanted to show you here was that you can mix the two together, but the size of the letters is the same. So you can use the Sassafras al alphabet stickers, you could also use um, the Jilly Beans uh, uh, letter stickers that are, are cut out as individual letters because they're about the same size as the Mini Market and the other tile letter stickers. Now if you don't like that look then you've got, um, you know that then for your future layouts that you'd like them either all tiled or all normal letters. Um, but I do quite like them mixed together but it works best if they're of a similar height in the size. The width is okay, you can still read it even if the larger letter, or if the individual letters are a larger width, um, but it helps that they're the same height. So that's everything uh, for this week and your challenge is to mix all the ends of your letter stickers to create a layout with either a mixed up sticker title or subtitle or both if you want a little bit of extra credit and I hope to see your layouts in the gallery. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.